Hi guys and welcome to Drum Dog. Now in recent weeks there's been a really cool trend on social media in the drum world and that is the everybody wants to rule the world challenge. Now this is a classic Tears for Fears tune but with a completely different beat on top and this new beat is all based on a little trick called metric modulation. Now I am a huge fan of metric modulation and it's an area of drumming that really excites me. So today we're going to be learning what is metric modulation and how do you use it. Now what is metric modulation? There's a lot of kind of rumors and whispers around kind of what it is and some people say it's a, oh it's a time signature change, oh no it's a, it's a change of feel while they're re-subdividing the oh, left phalange but I mean it's actually at its core a really simple device. It's as simple as this. It is a tempo change where one subdivision becomes another one. Now if that doesn't make sense off the bat, this really simple example is going to have it making sense for anyone. Now the key part of that definition is the fact that one subdivision is becoming a different one. So the thing that separates just a random tempo change from a metric modulation is the fact that the tempo change hinges on one subdivision becoming another subdivision. Now an example of that could be, say at 50 BPM we'll play eighth notes. That's going to sound like one and two and three and four and. So for this really simple modulation example, what if we said those eighth notes now became quarter notes? So now instead of being one and two and three and four and, we would go up to one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So our eighth notes have become quarter notes and as a result our tempo has doubled from 50 to 100. Now that's a really nice simple example of this with nice round numbers and just eights and quarters, 50 to 100, and that's kind of easy to grasp. So we're changing one subdivision, we're calling that subdivision another one, and the tempo's changing accordingly. Now where these modulations become a little bit more interesting and complicated is when we use subdivisions that are more involved than just quarters and eights. For example, what if we took dotted eighths, so that's every three sixteenth notes, and we took dotted eighths and then turned those into quarter notes. That's not going to double the tempo, that's going to be slightly less than double. Let's check it out. So let's keep our 100 BPM where we're going to be sat at 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now our dotted eighths we're going to find every 3 16th notes. So let's just play flat unaccented 16th notes. And accent groups of three. There's our dotted eights. And then if we said that was our new quarter note, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now that is already quite a complicated tempo change there, but one that still has some kind of related value as we move through. Metric modulation is all about tying two tempos together so the tempo change has a smooth common factor instead of just jumping from one random tempo suddenly into another one.
Now, it's pretty easy to quickly realize here that the options for modulations are vast. We can go from any subdivision into any subdivision, and there's a wide range of tempos we can jump into from any one place. So as well as jumping up into higher tempos, we can also use modulations to bring us down into lower tempos. So let's reverse our last example there. And instead of turning our dotted eights in our original tempo into quarter notes in our new tempo, so this time, let's take our quarter notes at our 100 BPM and turn those into the dotted eights in our second tempo. Now, a modulation like this is slightly more difficult to pick out because we've got no subdivision to start playing and just turn that into quarters. We're starting to have to hear a new tempo almost out of thin air. So one thing that can help you with this particular one is to play triplets at our original tempo and turn those into 16th notes in our new tempo. That is gonna give the same result. One, two, three, four. And here we go. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one e and a two e and a two e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a two e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a two e and a four e and a one. Just as a quick note, it can actually get really complicated and it's not that easy to work out what those second tempos are gonna be for a lot of modulations. So to make things easier, there's a great metric modulation calculator that I use online, where you just plug in the original tempo, your first modulation and the one it's turning into and it throws out your second tempo. I will put that as a link in the description. So now we should all understand what metric modulation is, a couple cool ways how we can use it, and we should be able to understand the wide array of tempos that are available to us through modulating different subdivisions. But this doesn't completely explain why the everyone wants to rule the world challenge sounds quite as cool as it does and works as well as it does. We're missing one vital ingredient there, and this one thing is a time signature change. Now, metric modulation doesn't need a time signature change to function, but you can often find them together at the same time to give a really snazzy effect. Now, this effect is keeping the bar the same length. So say we're modulating from 4-4 four, four into a tempo that's slower. In order to make that bar the same length, we can change the time signature to cut it shorter. So we've got the same length bar, which is hearing a new tempo through the same length of music. Now this is true and the exact case for the Everyone Wants to Rule the World challenge. Now the original tune by Tears for Fears has a real nice 12-8 or swung 4-4 four, four feel. We've got this really nice one and a two and a three and a four and a dun, dun, ka, one and a two and a three and a four and a dun, uh. So we've got that bar separated out into 12 eighth notes. For our modulation here, we're gonna be rehearing these eighth notes as 16th notes, which is gonna give us a slower tempo but to make these bars line up, we're gonna be changing from 4-4 four, four into 6-4, so two bars in the old tempo equate to one bar in our new slower tempo. Now this gives the effect of hearing a completely different tempo through the same track. We've got this regular backbeat still happening, and it's super effective because it's like reimagining the track from a completely different point of view.
I really hope this video has helped you guys understand what metric modulation is, how it functions, and why the Everyone Wants to Rule the World challenge sounds as cool as it does. Now, if you want to know more about metric modulation and you really want to dive into the roots of where it came from and its origins, I actually wrote a paper on this, which I'll throw a link to in the description, although disclaimer, it's super nerdy. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want more lessons, don't forget to head over to our website, drum.dog. We'll see you for the next one.